text, translation and commentary by Abdullah Yusuf Ali. Thank you. Uh, is that inspired? What is inspired? What you just read. That cover, no. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the Bible as well, the term Bible is not inspired either. We agree that the cover is not inspired. The text is inspired, not the cover. So the fact that Bible does not appear in the Bible does not mean that it's not a Bible. It's an idiom, it's a term. Yeah, when you say it's an idiom, I agree with you. Bible means a book, coming from the Greek word biblos, which means a book. Whereas the Quran names itself. The Bible doesn't name itself. Can I possibly ask another question on that particular? You read... Uh, if there are any other questioners, of course. you give them a chance, and then you come back. If there are none, you may continue. If there are none. Please make it possible for those people to come through if they wish to ask questions. Can I possibly ask while I come ahead? Yes. Yes. The next question is, you read from 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 and 17, which says that all scripture is God-breathed and is inspired for teaching. You also quoted from the book of Luke, uh, and you, you brought out certain points there. Now, as far as I understand the Bible, when it says all of Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, Scripture attests to itself, i.e. Scripture itself is saying that it is inspired. The Bible does say itself, that it does attest to itself that it is inspired. That's why when Jesus quoted from the prophets, he said uh, that the Scripture says that this Scripture has been fulfilled in your presence today. Right? Scripture is self-attesting. Is there a question that you would like to put in? It's a rhetorical question. All right. You see, I gave you that as a test. Now, when Paul wrote that, there was no Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This is what your Bible scholars tell us, that Paul wrote this about 25 years before any other book that was ever written. So he's not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or Acts. He's talking to Timothy about the scriptures which he as a Jew had learned. And the thing is to test it, put it to the test. And I gave you examples how to test it. This, anything, if it is from God, must be under these four headings. And I gave you Samson, and I can give you Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 25, and I can give you Ezekiel chapter 23, the whole of it, and we know that no decent man will be prepared to say that this is what came from God, which I would be ashamed to read unless you are prepared to, and I give a commentary on Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 25, about that siren, you know, a voracious, a voracious sexual woman. You know her. I don't know whether you know the, if you know the Bible, you know her. I do know the Bible, praise right. the Lord. Right. Chapter 16, verse 25. This is the insatiable lust. See? Opening her... You, you said uh, you don't want me to repeat it. I'm sure you don't want to repeat it either. No, I would like you, if you think that this is God's word, to read it to the audience and explain now what it is all talking about. I will do that with the chairman's consent. You may, seeing it's Thank a request you. coming from the speaker. Thank you. Can I repeat uh, what you said? You said that I must read it and explain it. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Uh, which chapter do you want me to read from? There are two particular ones. Chapter 16. 16. Ezekiel, verse 25. Verse 25. That's right. I would Ezekiel, appreciate silence while it is being Ezekiel read. Ezekiel 16, verse 25. Correct. If there is anybody else who wishes to make his or her way to the microphone, please start now. All right. Okay. 
Ezekiel verse... Ezekiel 16 verse 25 says, Thou hast built thy high place at every head of the way, and hast made thy beauty to be a board, and hast opened thy feet to everyone that passed by, and multiplied thy whoredoms. Right? That is what the Holy Scripture says, inspired by a holy God. What it means is that the prostitute has opened herself up to everybody uh, of certain nations. Now, what the scripture means is that this is figurative language. Right? It is, if you look at the context, I will read the context if you want, but I doubt if you've got the time. But the context here is figurative language. It's not speaking about one specific woman. It's speaking about the nation of Israel. And what it means is that there is only one God. We don't deny that. And because there's only one God, there's only one way to God. There's only one way to serve God. There's only one law. And what the nation of Israel had done was they had prostituted themselves to the other nations. They had said that there is another way to serve all these various gods. They had gone a-whoring after the gods. Now, we ourselves have to choose, as Israel had to choose, between whether we serve the one God with his one law, or whether we will run from the one God with his one law. We believe the Holy Scriptures right. teach what the one God says. Sorry, uh, does that do justice to your commentary? If, the, if Mr. Didat is happy that that is what the verse says. No, the verse says that, but you see the things that are being omitted there. The word there, you read feet just now. In Hebrew, it is not feet. That's right. No, we, right. we do not, agree with that. Right. That's right. In Hebrew, it is not feet. That's right. It is legs spread out. That's right. right. We agree with that. And we this woman, she is prepared to pay her customers. She is prepared to pay. Unlike the harlots of the world, she is not that type of a harlot. She we is agree. not that she person. She pays worst. you. She is the very worst. She, she pays you That's right. we for agree. doing it's to her worst. what you do to ordinary women, with, with the, to prostitutes. Now, this that's is what the, the Holy Scripture this, does this, say. That's what it says. Now, right. this, that's what you read just now about feet. In this fifth major revision of the New Testament, uh, uh, or the Bible, King James Version, the word feet are cut out. First, it was the legs. The legs of the women and her thighs were cut out. Now, you got the feet there. In this one, the feet are also taken out. So you see now, this is what I'm telling you, that this is not the word of God, that even your learned men are ashamed to leave even feet inside. You see, that the, the, the legs were sprawled out, they changed the American version to say the feet were sprawled out, and now the feet are also taken out, the word sprawled is taken out, and the word feet is taken out. I said, what game are you people playing? Therefore, I said, look, you, if you believe that this is the word of God, you would never do any such things. Uh, can I respond to that? No. Now you give somebody else a chance. There is another person this is behind. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I missed the boat. Uh, my, my, we... my Bible. Huh? Okay. Yes. <laughs> you want the Bible or the Holy Scripture? The Bible. Uh, we do agree that the translations do differ and that the, the translations very clearly did... Uh, did uh, put it down very subtly, and uh, I think that there is a lot of wisdom in doing that, but uh, for me personally, I would like the scripture to be read as it is in the original languages, which subsequent translations do do, as for example, my Bible, the New International Version, just one of the many translations, would not say feet, it would give a more literal translation of that particular scripture. The scriptures are useful for salvation, and therefore we need to understand what they are saying. Right. Thank you very much. The yeah, next questioner, please. Lower the microphone, otherwise we won't hear you. Mr. Dirat, you, it has been mentioned tonight that uh, Hannes Soros said that 75% that of the Quran is uh, written out of the Bible. I don't know very much about that, but you believe that the Quran is Nazir. What do you mean Nazir? Nazir. What do you mean Nazir? 
finished. What I'm why, why don't you give me what you have in your mind, your meaning? What, what meaning have you got? Well, that is something that has been sent down from God. Right, right, right. right. Yes, Tanzil. It has been sent down. It has been yes. sent down. Yes. Right. So you believe it has been sent down, it's an inspired word of God. What's your question? My question is simple as this, sir. You believe that the Quran is the inspired word of God. Do you believe it? Is that the question? Yes, and I will. Right. Uh, right. Just only right. one you question, do. please. Right. Will you take your turn if you have another question? No, I want to qualify that. No, just only your, your question is... I want to qualify, that's why I asked that, you see. Just only what is your question? The, the Does Mr. Didat accept the Quran yeah, because, as being... Yeah, because, because if I could prove to you out of the Quran that there are pre-Islamic, what you call, uh, passages that are in the Quran, that is pre-Islamic, that are come down from other books besides the Bible, like the Talmud and the Jewish folklore. I can read the folklore to you and I can read the... Yeah, but now just I will let your question is, does Mr. Dirat believe that the Quran as it is, is today was sent down by revelation? Yeah. His, his reply to that was that he accepts it. Yeah. So I want to qualify that by reading the Quran. Yeah, but just hold it. Uh, we could have okay. the next okay, question, okay, please. Uh, yes. Mr. Didat, you said that the God said he created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. And was it?